Hey friends, welcome back to At the Table with Jesus and welcome to a new week of getting to know him more. And I just trust that as we're starting this new uh, few days of getting to know Jesus better, that we will sit here in awe and wonder and that there will be a sense of gratitude in every one of our hearts because this table is a miracle. A, it's a picture. Um, it's interesting that we're not just uh, sitting at a desk with Jesus. We're not uh, at a, a job with Jesus, but we're at the table with Jesus. He says, I'll prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. And when he says that, he's talking about communion. He's talking about relationship, fellowship. He's talking about doing life together. He's not just saying, I'm going to give you a set of beliefs or some commands to obey or some rules to follow. He's saying, I want you to sit down at the table and have a relationship with me. Yes, I have things for you to do on planet Earth. Yes, I have a calling for your life. Yes, we're going to be involved in changing things for the better, but it starts in a relationship with Jesus. And I just want to say thank you to him again today for this privilege. And I think we all do. I just want to come to the table today with gratitude and say this is a miracle that the God of heaven invited me to a table. Thank you. Um, I, I didn't invite you to the table. I mean, if we're honest, some days we don't even get up and think about the table. We, we're running late. We've got stuff to do. We're out the door. We didn't have time today. And every single day, he starts the day thinking, I want to spend time with you. I can't wait for you to wake up today so that you and I can spend this day together. And so we're coming down to the end of our journey. And today we're coming down to the section where we're discovering that Jesus is our Redeemer. And so the topics we're going to get to dive into these next few days, Jesus is the Lamb. Jesus is the Passover Lamb. Jesus suffered on our behalf. Jesus is our redemption. Jesus is worthy of all praise because he has redeemed us. Jesus is worthy to impose judgment. Jesus is our Redeemer. What does that mean? Well, it means that sin put us in a predicament that we couldn't get out of. Bottom line is that sin doesn't make you bad. Sin makes us spiritually dead. And so it's not a matter of whether you think you're a good person or I think I'm a good person or whether I'm a little bit better than my neighbor or better than my brother-in-law or my sister-in-law or my whoever. Sin doesn't make you bad. The scripture teaches us that sin separates us from God by causing us to be spiritually dead. And dead people can't do anything to help themselves. And so sin isn't a problem. It's a predicament that we cannot overcome on our own. And we need outside help. So that's the gospel. If the bad news is sin makes you dead, then the good news is Jesus has the power to bring you to life. And that's what the story of Scripture is all about. It's not about Jesus coming to make you and me better people. Although following Jesus will improve our quality of being and our quality of living. But Jesus didn't come to make you better. Jesus came to bring you from death to life. Jesus didn't leave the throne just to improve our condition. He left the throne because he knew he was the only one who had the power to bring us from death to life. He is our Redeemer. So what does that mean exactly? It means that He paid the price. He is the price. He is enough. He satisfied the wrath of God. He paid in full for the sins of humanity. He covered with His innocent life all the wrongs of every life, and He is our Redeemer. He's not giving you a coupon that redeems you. He is the coupon that redeems you. He's not giving you a secret code into heaven. He is the code into heaven. He's not saying to you, here's what you can do to make it up with God or make it back to God or make it right with God. He's saying, I am making it right with God. I am your Redeemer. And you know what that says about you most today? It says that you have incredible worth to God. I just want you to think about that as we go into these few days together, celebrating that we have a Redeemer, someone who paid the price for us. 
So we honor him. But in the same moment we honor him, we receive what that means about us. And you know what it means about you? It means that you have incredible worth to God. I mean, you can say it, and even though it sounds a little poetic, it's true that you are worth Jesus to God because Jesus is what God paid for you. So if there's a voice in your life today telling you that you don't matter, telling that you don't count, telling you that you're not worthy, telling you that you never make it back into a relationship with God, you need to understand through seeing in these few days what Jesus has done, that you are incredibly valuable to God. Yes, you were dead and separated, but you were always valuable. No, you couldn't do anything to change it yourself, but you were always worth something enormous to God. You've always been on his radar. You've always been in view. You've always been in his heart and you've always been in his thoughts. He has had his eye on you the whole time. And that's why Jesus paid it all because God loved you and wanted you to come into a relationship with him. Praise God, we're at the table with a price payer. He is our Redeemer.